Hello, my art-loving friends. I have a very special box of goodies today. It is filled with watercolor deliciousness. So let's just get in the box and see what we have. All right, here we go. So many wonderful things in this box you cannot even imagine. First thing would be this little Holbein palette. This is a mini palette with these wonderful colors here. And she sent me one of these before and wanted to send me another one because maybe one of my girls would like to use it. And I think she's right. I think they would absolutely love that. So it's a great color selection. And even though it doesn't look like a whole lot of paint, it is actually quite a bit of paint. <laughs> As you guys know, with my trying to use it up watercolor series, it takes forever to use up watercolors. So this would probably last quite a while. And this will actually fit right inside of an Altoids tin or anything like that. I'll show you. Hold that up. All right, so this is the tin that I sent out in my advent box last year. And you can see this has some glue on the back of it. I can just put that in there. And I already painted the inside white and it doesn't come out because of the glue on the back of it. And just like that, we have a fun little palette. So I would just recreate the watercolor swatch sheet to match here. So it would fit inside and we'd be set. Here is the one that she sent me originally years ago, <laughs> years ago. And it was missing the black also, but I got the black and I put it in there. And so I think, yeah, these are exactly the same. So I don't need to swatch these for you today because I did that in that previous video, but I know that was a while ago, but I will try to find that video and link it for you. Next up, we have Da Vinci New Colors. Peach, Mint, Red Tint, Artemis, Pyroline Maroon, Davies Gray, and Lilac, and then a Rembrandt Transparent Yellow Medium. Look at this. So these are the more opaque colors and I'm enthralled. <laughs> Totally enthralled. So we have to remember when we do this Rembrandt palette redo that I'm going to be doing soon that this is in here. So I might want to make a note of that for sure. Also, since we need to swatch and in this box is some paper, da -da -da -da, we will use this paper to swatch. Now this is one of my most favorite papers ever. It is the Paul Rubens glitter paper. Here's the cover if you want to take a look. I just love this paper. I have the bigger size of it. Oh, it's just so pretty. Look at that sparkle. Isn't that gorgeous? So let's try these colors on this paper. We'll use the brush I was using in the video last time. Here is the Da Vinci Peach. Very nice. This is the Da Vinci Mint. So these are more transparent than I expected them to be. I thought they might be a little more opaque. We'll see about this one. This one definitely looks opaque. Red tint. Yep, that one's a more opaque one, but I bet when we dilute it, it can become pretty transparent. Very nice. And this one is the Artemis. I'm really excited for this one. Wow. <laughs> I've seen other people use this color and it's so pretty. And now I have it. Oh, that's so awesome. Here is the Da Vinci Paraline Maroon. Ooh, that's strong and gorgeous. Holy moly. Look how pretty. Intense and beautiful and lovely and wonderful and all of that. Here is the Davies Gray. For some reason, I kind of really enjoy these more opaque grays. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, pretty. So it has a green tint to it, which is really neat. I'm easy to please though, so there's that. <laughs> if it's watercolor, I generally like it. <laughs> okay, here is the lilac. I'm so grateful to have these colors. Oh, that's pretty. Way prettier than I expected. Ooh, that comes out on the paper beautifully. And this paper is really nice too, so gotta say something about that. And then, it's not on the list here, but she threw this one in last minute, 
Cobalt Blue Deep. This is another one in the video previously where I said I was doing a challenge by Denise Soden and Terracotta was one of the colors for the challenge. The other color was Cobalt Blue Deep. And in my Da Vinci palette, I had Cobalt Blue but I didn't have the cobalt blue deep. So I was also trying to do that painting from a dot card of the terracotta and the cobalt blue deep. And I actually have that painting right here. I was doing it on the Baohong paper. Here's my reference photo. Here's the painting. So you can see how far I've gotten. And I had terracotta right here in the Charlie O'Shields little dot card palette. And you can see it's pretty well gone but I have the actual dot cards from the company. So here's my cobalt blue deep and you can see I've mixed terracotta in it because I have had to mix them to get certain blends in my painting. And here is the rest of the terracotta that I have available. So I do have this dot still, but now I have half pans of both of these colors. So I can finish this painting without stressing about running out of color. Someday I will finish that painting. All right, back to this little palette. This is the Rembrandt Transparent Yellow Medium. And I did look in my palettes to see if I had this color before she made a half pan for me. And as far as I could tell, I did not have it. So that's why she sent it my way. I'm very excited about that. Next up is this little tin here. It was really generous of her to send these tins that it's quite nice. And oh, you guys, this is amazing. She made for me Denise's, Denise Soden, her Embrace Opacity Da Vinci palette. That is so, so awesome. I've seen this palette. I've wanted this palette. I have some of the colors that are in this palette in my other Da Vinci palettes, but not all of them. And the fact that she sent them here is just awesome. So, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, I'm thrilled. So let's give these colors a try. One of them is a duplicate over the other palette that I just showed you, the lilac. And it's such a pretty color, I am thrilled to have it more than once. Plus then I can keep this Embrace Opacity palette separate. I don't have to incorporate these colors into my other palette if I don't want to. Look at that, so that's the Titan Buff, the Naples Yellow Deep. I had a lot of water on my brush for that one, just so you know, so I'm sure, yeah, that can get way more deep than I did. The raw sienna. I don't usually swatch like this, but I wanted to give you swatches and kind of do it in a fast format so that this video wouldn't take forever because there are a lot of colors in here. I just put my finger in that. Look, another half pan of the terracotta, yay. <laughs> Awesome, it's a very interesting color. It's a PR 102. Indian Red, PR 101. Oh, that's beautiful. I have to say that's probably one of my most favorite Indian Reds. That swatch got a little wonky, didn't it? Violet Iron Oxide. This is a color she has sent me before because it's amazing. One of her favorites, I believe. Back to the lilac. Let's see if that looks exactly the same as this one. Well, this one's dry and that one's not, so they don't look exactly the same yet, but we'll see when they dry. Should be the same. So this is cerulean blue, and the other one was cobalt blue deep, I believe. Cerulean blue, cobalt, Turquoise Deep. This should be beautiful, except this is not the right color. <laughs> These were out of order. I believe this one is either Denise's gray or stormy blue. Stormy blue. That's stormy blue. <laughs> I'll have to rearrange them to match that swatch card unless I create my own. That's funny. So this one now is Denise's gray. It's more opaque. It's really, really neat. Well, glad to have this color. These two are colors that I love, just love. These are all Da Vinci colors, in case you couldn't see that on the palette. This is the Chromium Oxide. 
That's gonna have a lot of water in that one. That'll be interesting. Now we have the cobalt turquoise deep. I had a lot of water in my brush again, so let me get a little more paint there. Oh, that's beautiful. And look how it ran in the water. Mm, pretty. Very nice. So now that this is drying, it is looking much the same. I have a little bit more mass tone in this one, but it looks exactly the same. Oh, beautiful palette, beautiful colors. I want to take all of these to Canada with me. It's going to be really hard to choose what to take because probably won't actually have time for much painting at all. So it should be interesting. I just want to take them all. All right, and then she decided that Rosa Gallery paints were not so much for her anymore and sent me all of her extras. I think we'll skip swatching these. Oh, bright red. That's my most favorite one ever. We should at least swatch that one because it's my most favorite color. Bright red of the Rosa Gallery. But I have several Rosa Gallery videos where you can see all these beautiful colors. So I will link some of those videos in the description box below. However, look at that bright red. It's a PR254. Best red ever. I love it. So we'll explore this palette further because I do need to get back to my Rosa Gallery palette. I have bought before my no buy a bunch of new colors that I need to incorporate into that palette. So we'll include this with that in case there are any that we want to do there. Otherwise we can make an additional palette for someone or just for fun. Maybe some kind of limited palette with weird colors. That would be fun. Let's do that. Okay, next up is this cute little plastic tin. It's not a tin, it's just plastic, but I knew what I meant. Oh, Da Vinci Earth Colors. See, Violet Iron Oxide. Uh, she likes that one, wants to make sure I've got it. And I am grateful to have it. <laughs> so love that color. Violet Iron Oxide again. I did this one a little darker than the previous one, so that's sure pretty. Quinacridone Burnt Orange. This is the original one. Let's see what this looks like in Da Vinci. Ooh, oh, that's pretty. Much prettier, sorry Rembrandt. I love Rembrandt watercolors, but that's much prettier than the Rembrandt one. Although the one in Rembrandt was just the Quin Orange, not Quin Burnt Orange, so that could be a difference. This is the Burnt Umber. So these are the Da Vinci Earth colors. Ooh, I do like my browns, I don't know why. Burnt Umber, yeah, that's pretty. This is Raw Sienna Deep. Looks a little green tinted like some are. Whoa, that is not what I expected. That has a lot of yellow undertones, no green undertones at all. Interesting. Look at that. So those are the only four labeled. These have their names written on the half pans. Gold Ochre, this was in the Charlie O'Shields palette that I showed you in the previous video. I'll link that in the corner in the description box below. I've mentioned that video, I think a couple times. So the Gold Ochre is just beautiful. It's a mixture of PY42 and PY83 right here. This one here is the Burnt Sienna. Again, I had a lot of water in my brush that time. Yeah, pretty. I really like Da Vinci watercolors. They are so nice. This last one here is the Raw Umber. Now this one, since it's not a Sienna, it's an Umber, might be a little green tinted. Yeah, kind of brown with a green undertone if you want to stretch it that far. Although this one's more dark brown than some of the other raw umbers I've seen. Less green, more dark brown. Love it. Nice. Earth colors. So that's these four at the bottom and these three here. That would be a fun palette. She also sent me a Tombow Fudenosuke pen which is one of my favorites, and I used mine so much that it is starting to wear out. So grateful to have this. It actually is in my travel brush kit that goes with me everywhere. So I will add this in there too, since mine's not gonna last very much longer. Next, we have the Magic Mini Mixing Palette. <laughs> These are Daniel Smith colors. 
Lunar Earth, Lunar Red Rock, Lunar Blue, and then My Merry Blue Potter Pink. Look at the cute tin. That's so precious. Love it. Oh, and yes, I forgot about this. These are three quarter pans. Isn't that cool? So look, here in this is a half pan. Compare the size, right? And then here we have full pans, although Rose's full pans do have the corners that are a little bit cut off, but there's the size comparison. Three quarter pans. I've never actually seen a three quarter pan in person, so that's really fun to see that. I may have to look into that. Might be a good compromise for some of these palettes. Okay, so here is Daniel Smith's Lunar Earth. We'll put this down here. Very granulating, very pretty. Here's Lunar Red Rock. Oh, that's strong and gorgeous. Oh, how pretty. I'm excited for this next one too. This is Lunar Blue. Oh goodness. So her hope for me is that I can make a mixed palette using some of these colors she sent. And I would be thrilled to do that. I only have one mixed palette so far. It's this little magnetic one I did a video of a couple weeks back. And I put a variety of different brands in here. And looks like they're all dried out, ready to go to Canada with me. So I can use some of these colors she sent me to make a really fun mixed palette. I'm excited. This one is my Mary Blues Potter Pink. Let's go ahead and fill up this whole space with this color. Why not? Need more water. <laughs> I didn't have enough water on my brush that time, unlike previous times. Oh yeah, soft and beautiful. This one could probably use some pre-wetting, but it's always going to be kind of a softer, lighter color. We'll revisit all of these once they're dry. Very fun. I love the three-quarter pans. I kind of feel bad using this paper. It's some of my favorite paper, and I'm just using it for swatching, but there's a lot of it. <laughs> 20 sheets. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm still kind of freaking out. All right. Then we have this tube of goodness. Rosa Gallery's Chromium Oxide, M. Graham's Viridian, Holbein's Ultramarine Deep, Holbein's Shell Pink, Holbein's Juan Brillant, Rembrandt's French Ultramarine, and Holbein's Burnt Sienna. Let's see if I can actually do swatching straight from the tube like this without making a huge mess. This will be, yep, already impossible. I guess I better get some pans out, huh? Ooh, this one's really sticky. All right, Rosa Galleries, Chromium Oxide. It's a PG-17. So let's see what we can do here. I have a bunch on the tip of my brush that I need to kind of immerse in water and mix in so it's not a big chunk, if that's possible. There we go. Wow, the pretty hue. Oh, you got a glare. Look at that. Look how pretty. All right, M. Graham Viridian. Hopefully this one doesn't explode. Okay, we're good. <laughs> it did put some paint in my other swatch, but should be okay. This is a true Viridian, so it's not going to show up super strong like you might be used to with phthalo greens. Since it's a PG-18, it's always going to be a little bit lighter. Well, a lot bit lighter than any kind of phthalo green. Holbein's Burnt Sienna. Oh, had water dripping off the ferrule of the brush there. Hmm, that's pretty. This has a lot of orange tint leaning through it, and that's pretty. Holbein's Ultramarine Deep. It's always interesting trying to get them right from the tube, but it's working okay. There we 
are. That's pretty. I know, I say that's pretty for most of them because I am easy to please. Holbein's Shell Pink. Very soft. That would be lovely for some certain types of paintings. Shin Hands, Jean Brion. Nice. I actually started a Shin Hand palette, but I paused putting it all together, waiting for this color, because she did tell me this color was coming and I want to include it in the palette. So now we'll have a Shin Hand video coming up. Hey, Rembrandt's French Ultramarine. Let's go ahead and swatch this one under this other Ultramarine Deep from Holbein. Ah, quite a bit more blue, although the other one is kind of dry already, so we will wait to see, but this one looks way more granulating and a little bit bluer. Okay, let's fill in this slot with this half pan since it's all by its lonesome. This is the Shin Han Mineral Violet. She gave me a little sample of it and I'm so grateful for that. Cannot wait to see this. I can tell already it's gonna be gorgeous. Are you ready? Pretty. Oh, pretty. So again, you may think there's not much in this half pan, but this could actually last quite a while. Plus it seemed pretty highly pigmented for a mineral violet. So I may include this in a mixed palette as well. So granulating, beautiful, love it. We also have this cute sticker in there. I don't know who the artist is. Seems like I should recognize the artwork, but I do not, unfortunately. Last in this haul is this entire bag of core tubes, which means we have a core palette redo video coming up because I need to incorporate these into my core palette for sure. And I'll just tell you the tube names as we swatch them. There are nine of these, and the first one is Terra Verde, and it's a PG-23. Should be super light tinting if it's like any other Terra Verde. And it is just real subtle, real subtle. We'll be putting these into full pans and putting them in my core palette. Prussian Blue is one that I swatched for you already in a previous video where I did the pansies. And you know, I'll just do that at the end. Okay, that's fine. Transparent Yellow Oxide here is a PY42, which is the same pigment you'll find in yellow ochres and some raw siennas and stuff like that. Some raw siennas, not all of them. Yeah, a little prettier than the PY42 we swatched from the Charlie O'Shields palette. A little less mustard-like, very bright and beautiful. Next up, we have Raw Umber. This is a PBR7. That one moved in water a lot. I kept catching it though with the brush again, but I could tell it was moving in water. And again, it's hard to get a good swatch when I'm doing like right from the tube lid, so. We'll do these proper later. I do need to add them into my watercolor database and so they will be swatched on a full good swatch. Transparent Brown Oxide. I'm super excited for this one. This is one I've kind of been lusting after. It's a PR 101 and now I have some to put in my palette. I'm so grateful for that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. So this is one that a lot of people will use in place of like English red, Venetian red, Indian red, or just some of their other browns like the Burnt Sienna. It depends on what kind of artist you are and your preferences, but that's a beautiful brown brown and I can definitely appreciate that one. Beautiful. Here's another one you could probably use to replace those same colors I just mentioned. This is Transparent Red Oxide, PR 101, and we'll go ahead and swatch it below this one just so you can compare. So I would say compared to the top one, this one's just a little bit more orange. Wow, they're very similar, but yeah, a little bit more orange is coming through. That's gorgeous. Ah, my core palette is going to be amazing. <laughs> Thanks to friends like this and 
lovely watercolors. Ah, just so nice. All right, cobalt green. Ooh, PG26. I'm excited to have this. I have this in Mission Gold and uh, Prodigal Sons, I believe. Can't remember for sure on Prodigal Sons. I'd have to pull out my palette and look. Very nice. I swatched that appropriately under the Terravera because it's also a little bit more subtle. Granulating, beautiful. Thalo Turquoise. This is a PB15-3 and a PG7. This one's gonna be really pretty, I'm sure. Oops, that was a lot of paint. Oh well. We get to see its full effect and that's a very messy swatch. Don't really like messy swatches. Wow, intense, gorgeous, lovely, all those words. Prussian blue, I did swatch this for you in my previous core video where I swatched using some pansies, but look at that, look at that beautiful color. I'm gonna have to get all these new colors in the window for light fast testing and I did get a comment from a viewer that Core did some independent light fast testing and they have released those results, so I do need to go look that up. This is Isoendolinone Yellow, and that is PY110. I love my yellows and yellow oranges. We'll put this one over here. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that's bright, beautiful, intense. Oh, so gorgeous. So when we put the core palette together later, we'll have to compare that one to the Diarolide Yellow. I'm curious, because it reminds me of that yellow. Although this one looks maybe a little bit more vibrant and transparent, not sure. All right, back to our dried paints. We'll start at the beginning here. These are the Da Vinci New Colors Peach Mint Red Tint. This is the Artemis. Look at the Artemis. What, it's so pretty. Paraline Maroon. Davies Gray, look how that dried, it's beautiful. So beautiful. This is the Lilac, this is the Rembrandt Transparent Yellow Medium. This is the Rosa Bright Red. This is the Da Vinci Cobalt Blue Deep, lovely. And then, then we move to the Da Vinci Earth Colors, Violet Iron Oxide, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Burnt Umber, Raw Sienna Deep, what a glow that has. These are beautiful colors. The Gold Ochre, Burnt Sienna, the Raw Umber by Da Vinci, all by Da Vinci. And then we have the Daniel Smith. Wow, look at the way that dried. Could you imagine painting rocks with that? That would be so perfect. Daniel Smith, Lunar Earth, Lunar Red Rock. Oh, look at this one. Lunar Blue. And the My Merry Blue Potter's Pink. Those are so gorgeous. And then we have Denise's Embrace Opacity Palette. Oh, love it. Titan Buff, Naples Yellow Deep, Raw Sienna, Terracotta, Indian Red, Violet Iron Oxide, Lilac, Cerulean Blue, Stormy Blue, Denise's Gray, Chromium Oxide, and Cobalt Turquoise Deep. <laughs> this page is still drying a little bit, but we have Rosa Gallery's Chromium Oxide, Ingram's Viridian, Holbein's Burnt Sienna, Holbein's Ultramarine Deep, Holbein's Shell Pink, Shinhan's Jean Brillant, Shinhan's Mineral Violet, Rembrandt's French Ultramarine. And we're moving on to the core colors. This is the Terre Verte. I think I've lost track a little bit of these colors, but luckily you just saw them. Maybe that's the transparent yellow oxide. I believe it is. This one is the raw umber. The transparent brown oxide here. Cobalt green. That's really pretty. This is the Thalo Turquoise Prussian Blue Transparent Red Iron Oxide and the Isoindolinone Yellow. All right, the only thing that I did not swatch for you was this cute little Holbein palette. This is so much fun. I feel like a kid in a candy store. I am so thrilled 
to have all of this and get to add them to my watercolor collection. I'm an avid watercolor collector, as you probably know, and this makes my heart happy. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much to the person who sent this to me. This means a lot to me. Can't even express how much this means to me that you thought of me when you were purging your tubes. I really appreciate it. Especially since I'm on a permanent no-buy as far as art supplies go. Kind of eases my mind knowing that I have some new colors first of all and can refill some other colors without stressing about it. All right, I hope this inspired you to get out your watercolors and play and maybe make a new palette or just stare and drool and love your colors. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Go away. Then what? Then what do we have? <laughs> it's just too cute. <laughs> that is one big puppy. <laughs> Isn't he cute? He is huge.